Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Michaels Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August. I should have this prepared ahead of time. 15th, 2019. You can call it halfway through. Yes, yeah, 31, not exact math, but close enough. It's halfway through the Dog Days of Podcasting season. I am WX0MIK, otherwise known as Mike Wills. And for this year, we are covering amateur or ham radio. So section 6.3 is where we are at today. And as a technician licensee, you're more likely to make a lot of contacts through some sort of a local repeater or repeater system. So the first part in the book, they start talking about how to find repeaters. Um, They kind of cover different ways of doing it themselves in here. Um, Mostly what I would recommend if you're looking for repeaters in your local area, there are two apps that are widely used on that. The first app is called Repeater Book. It's completely free. And a lot of people, when I even put a poll out there, like, what do people use? They're using Repeater Book. So the official directory of the ARRL and there's like four other groups is another app called RFinder and that one the the um application itself works pretty good the website is absolutely horrible and you have to pay for it and it's not overly cheap I think it was like 30 bucks a year or something like that I paid for one year and I probably won't pay for a second one. Um, Generally, if it's not really in repeater book, you probably don't need to overly worry about it. It will eventually find its way in there and then you, um, you'll find it there eventually. So um, within this, when you start to program your radio, there are various um, repeater offsets or shifts that you set up in your radio because, uh, Remember, a repeater is really listening on one frequency and it's transmitting on, at the exact same time on another frequency. So usually when they are giving you the frequency, uh, what they're doing is they're giving you the receiving frequency and then they usually denote the uh, transmit offset, um, which can be either positive number or a negative number. And then how much it offsets is really based upon the band or in some cases just how the person set it up, which is kind of weird. But most, so let's just stick to the standard handhelds. So if you're working with like a two meter system, usually it's a plus or minus 600 kilohertz. um, And that depends on where it falls into the bands usually. And in 70 centimeter, your UHF, it's uh, usually plus or five megahertz. Those have held up pretty close to standard. So the the book will um, kind of talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the other thing that they do mention in here is some of the um, slang, if you want to call it, that that hams will use. And I'm st- Starting to understand it or starting to put numbers together. So uh, in the in the book, they use example. Hams will say, meet you on the 443.50 machine. Okay, well, that would make sense. I tune in the 44.50. It's probably a positive 5 megahertz offset, and I can start talking on there. Um, and then another case is, and this is what I hear more often, is let's move to the, the 49 repeater. Or, yeah, 94 repeater is what the book says. Um, 
94. What's 94? So if you're familiar with the area, that would be 46, 146.94. So they're only using the last two, three digits. In my area, it's a 650 and the two, the 24 or 240, uh, depending upon um, who's talking. So it gets a little tricky, especially when you first start. You just kind of have to kind of um, work with it and um, map it in your head, <laughs> per se. So I mentioned the other night, and I did not realize this was in here, so I would have held off on that is a uh, linked repeater systems. So I mentioned the other night how Florida has a linked repeater system that is statewide. Uh, there are other different ways of linking them, I th but you do have to be careful when you're on these repeater systems because you could potentially be transmitting across multiple um Repeaters across the entire state, entire area. Maybe, probably not as likely, but across the entire nation. Um, so you really got to be conscious of that because you don't want to be sucking up valuable repeater space for just a rag chew. Rag chew is just rant, just talking and long term talking. In fact, I think there's a an award for rag chewing, I guess. I don't know. Contest. I'm, contests don't really appeal to me right now, but that'd be part of that, I think. So the other, so we talked about the offset on your repeater. Um, the other thing that's important to know is that a lot of times you need an access, to, access tone. So what is an access tone? It is an inaudible tone that gets played every time you hit the transmit button and then the repeater picks that up and says oh you're trying to access me i will retransmit this so what this is good for is just let's just say you have a couple of repeaters on very similar frequencies maybe even the exact same frequencies but um and they're not linked but you're trying to transmit to this one particular one particular one well you are um you want to make sure you're hitting the right one and not having the other one transmit as well so you put an access tone in there and you make sure it's unique to the area so that you can then um just contact that one particular repeater rather than hit accidentally hit three or four of them that you did not intend to so those are inaudible tones um those are those can be uh, our sub audible tones, I guess. So those can be in uh, configured in your radio and it will automatically transmit those when you um, hit the push to talk. And that is usually included in the, um, the configurations within like repeater book and R finder or on the club sites and stuff. It's, it's, a, it's usually a well-known thing. Um, it used to be that those tones were used for when you want to keep a, a repeater private. Now it's, you almost need to because there's just so many. I think in my hometown, we're talking seven, six or seven repeaters, if I remember right. And that is just in the immediate area. And then you start talking to area cities, which are reasonably close. You know, you're adding several more. So you really, it's really important to make sure that you're programming incorrectly because otherwise you could be transmitting, no one will hear you. And uh, same thing with your offset. If you don't have your offset correct, they're not going to hear you, but you'll go on real receive stuff. Um, the last part in this chapter is talking about digital repeater systems. So there's various ones. We've kind of talked about a little bit about some of these in the past. Um, so the IRLP or Internet Radio Linking Project is one of them. I'm going to cover these as I understand them. So as I understand IRLP, it, um, and I have not tried it myself because I I don't want to do it wrong. And so if you want to call it that, um, through your an analog radio, you can punch in a code to activate the system. 
And then you can punch in a unique identifier for each um, repeater within the, the that has the IRLP. And then you can put out your call to whatever you're connected to and listen in. And so the area in your area hears it and that area would hear it. Again, I haven't really tried it because a repeater that has it is usually pretty busy. And I'm not sure. Well, I'll cover some of the other reasons here in a minute because they all kind of fall into the same category. Um, so ultimately, I'm I'm afraid that if I try it, no one's going to answer anyway. And then it's going to be wor not worth the effort. So... Um, the next one that they mention in here is Echolink. Now, Echolink um, is another old uh, voice over internet protocol technology. Um, so each uh, I don't each re, re, so they kind of link them both together here. Each one is called a node within this network. Um, Echolink is kind of neat because there's an app for that. So you can literally start connecting to all these nodes and um, actually start to talk to people. Um, honestly, I have yet to actually make a, that I can recall, actually make a contact on Echolink. So I don't know. <laughs> oh, wait, I did listen to that on Echolink. So I guess I, I didn't talk. I didn't talk because it was a, uh, Tornado, or not tornado, hurricane net, and I didn't. I was like, I'm just going to listen this time. Um, otherwise, those two are kind of the oldest technologies. Uh, at least Echolink has an app for that, so you can use your your <laughs> your phone to do ham radio. Um, the next ones are more proprietary. So you have um, Wires 2, which actually is not Wires X or 10, I'm not sure which, is a proprietary system of the Yazoo company, which is a radio manufacturer. Uh, you have D-Star, which is based on the public D-Star standard, which is primarily, as I understand it, is um, on brain, ICOM brand radios. And then you have DMR, which is a little bit more cross-band radios, but it's still not on, it's not... 100% compatible with anything else. So all three of those, they're not compatible to each other. Echolink, I'm not sure how that works over the um, radio. So sorry, can't explain that one much for, more than that. But ultimately what happens with these digital repeater systems is you have your, your antenna and your local repeater, and then it's hooked up to a PC of some sort or server or whatever, and then it's hooked up to other repeaters via the internet. In simple terms, that's about what it is. So DMR is kind of cool. Wires, um, I haven't done much with, and same thing with the Yazoo um, stuff. So um, what I would do is go through this, um, learn some of this stuff. It is important to know. Um, and then... Um, move on <laughs> to the next step. So, holy cow, I talked longer than I thought it would. So, um, yeah. Repeaters in general, once you got them figured out, it's pretty easy. It's wrapping your head around it at first because it can be a little confusing at first. But once you get it, get it figured out, it makes sense. Now the trick is actually programming your radio and learning how to program your radio so it works. So tomorrow we are talking nets. And so I will replay a recorded net that I did. I would guess that is all for now. So so I really appreciate everyone who, who's listening. And uh, until tomorrow, 73 from WX0MIK. The frequency is now clear. The frequency is clear. WX0MIK 73.